It's an honor to be here. Thank you for looking at me. Uh, right here we got a box. And I can do stuff like uh, almost two hours stand in direct uh, contact with the ice. But I learned it in hard nature. Hard nature is merciless but righteous. And he taught me to do things with my immune system, nervous system, the cardiovascular system and my mind beyond my thinking, beyond belief. And it was tested by Professor Hopman. It was tested in New York. It was tested in Finland, physiologically, with the immune system. All kinds of things came out because I exposed myself to the extreme, naturally, in heart nature. It's my teacher. He taught me. And I think we still got to learn a lot from nature because we are not in balance with nature anymore. It's gone. But for that, we are here. For that, you are there. And I'm going to do my utmost best to convey a message which I got since I was investigated by a blood uh, research wherein I could suppress by thinking and respiratory exercises which I learned at Heart Nature, suppress the inflammatory marks in my blood so we can have power over the body by our mind but for that we have to go back to be in balance with nature nature is our teacher and I will try and show it now Professor Hopman is coming she is going to explain data thank you Thank you. Um, well, the big question, of course, here is um, how is it possible for a human being to be exposed in an ice bath for one hour and 44 minutes? Well, in order to answer that question, we had to do an experiment because there's no physiology textbook that uh, tells you what happens to a human being in ice. And I'll show you a little bit of the atmosphere of the experiment in Nijmegen. You can see here, Wim came to Nijmegen and we exposed him for 80 minutes in ice, like it's now happening here. Okay, the, the big question that we all face in these days too with the cold weather is how to keep ourselves warm. Because our human body wants to stay at a core temperature of 37 degrees. In order to measure Wim Hof's core temperature, he swallowed a pill, the pill you see here. And that pill travels through his stomach and sits in his splenic area. And in that way we can precisely measure his core body temperature. And what we expect when he's staying in the ice like this for one hour, one and a half hour, that his core body temperature drops. And we know when it drops 10 degrees, up to 27 degrees, a person dies. But already under 35 degrees, uh, we talk about hypothermia and you really shiver and feel very badly. So the big question is what happens to uh, his core body temperature when he's standing in this ice? Well, that was the first big surprise. I show you the result here of the core body temperature. The blue shade is the area when he is 80 minutes in the ice, exactly like he's in the ice here in a few minutes. And what you see is that the core body temperature drops hardly. It goes from 37.7 to 37.4. Absolutely not important. 
So maybe there's a little layer of air between the eyes and the skin, which gives him a bit of isolation. But we measured a lot of skin temperatures too, and that's shown in this slide. And what you see here is many different skin temperatures. They're all around 30 degrees, which is very normal. And what you see is when, when he's in the eyes, most of them drop to 5 to 10 degrees. That's very, very cold. So there's no isolation from an air layer. His shell is very, very cold, gets uh, extremely cold, whereas his core stays warm. And that's very exceptional. And here you see two temperatures that are, this is his, his head and this is high up his shoulder. That were the areas that, the, uh, that were above the eyes. Another remarkable finding is that when we go in the eye, so when we take a cold shower, um, your heart rate and blood pressure goes up tremendously. <laughs> this is what happens when you, uh, when you go in a cold shower. Your heart rate goes up tremendously. And this is what happened with Wim. His heart rate and blood pressure hardly increased, only at the end of the experiment, so only after 45 minutes to an hour. One other remarkable finding that I would like to share with you is that he increases his metabolism. He can heat up his, uh, his body by doubling his metabolism. During the whole procedure, while he was in the ice for 80 minutes, his energy expenditure was twice as high, and with that he produces extra heat which, however, cannot explain the fact that his core body temperature does not decrease more. So, what are possible explanations? And I have three, and there may be other, but one explanation could be that uh, Wim is a very, uh, very much into tumor meditation. And from the tumor meditation, which is fr f uh, mostly done in Asia, we know that it produces heat. So, maybe that's part of his heat production. Also, as Wim was telling uh, a few minutes ago too, it, it creates for him a possibility to control his vessels, control his blood vessels. What we see is that he can separate his core very well from his shell. So this could be an explanation. Another explanation is that Wim has been telling me that he's doing this for years and year, as, years. As a boy of 12 years old, he already jumped into cold water. So maybe it's more of a training effect, and we all could do it if we just expose ourselves gradually to cold. And by that, train our autonomic nervous system and control our circulation. A third explanation could be that he has some genetic advantage to do this. That he has some changes in his cold receptors or changes in his pain receptors that make him more that make it more easy for him to do those kind of experiments. We don't know yet. I just gave three explanations. We need to do more studies uh, on them. As you can see, it's it's really something uh, uh, exceptional. He was sitting in 80 minutes in ice like this. His core body temperature did not drop. Physiological, we call this a mystery and uh, we need to do more research to really understand how you can control uh, processes in your body that we have thought so far that we were not able to control uh, voluntarily. So um, and with this I would like to, uh, to finish my presentation and I wish, <laughs> <laughs> I wish them good luck.